supposed to know that thing was so important to him? There was a plaque right next to it that said so. Yeah, well, I don't go to museums to read. I go there to see. All right, I'm going to be doing a video series on how to introduce all of the Marvel characters um, to the MCU that haven't been put into the MCU yet. Um, and alternate versions of characters from other universes that have been cancelled or shut down or something like that. So, um, put in the comments what you want me to talk about later. Right now we're going to start with Marvel's first family. So, with the Fantastic Four. Um, I think... Uh, in WandaVision, right around the time that uh, they start covering sitcoms like The Office, if that's a thing, you get, uh, you cast Mr. Fantastic as, um, or you cast John Krasinski as Mr. Fantastic, and he's the aerospace engineer that Monica was talking about. You have a little prequel episode. Flash, uh, or at least flashbacks showing how they met and how they know each other. And then you show that he goes with them into the hex and turns into Jim Halpert. I think that would be great. A Jim Halpert type character anyways. Um, but... The best thing that they could probably do, give kitty litter on the floor. My cat drags a lot of it out after it goes to the bathroom, so yeesh, I'll have to clean that in a second. Um, uh, you have you have the Fantastic Four before they're fan the Fantastic Four working with Sword. And so, uh, Reed Richards goes missing, um, maybe like four years before, uh, the start of WandaVision. Um, not, not WandaVision, uh, Infinity War. They're coming across a planet that's being destroyed by Galactus. And, um, while they're on their research mission, Galactus shoots them with the power cosmic right as they're being um burnt up by the sun and its cosmic rays and then when their ship explodes uh or, or when their ship gets damaged by the power cosmic it crashes into the planet that's being destroyed um and they're stranded there they're in searing pain. They're all covered in burns. And then they heal. And as they're healing, Mr. Fantastic turns into like a liquid puddle. Sue Storm goes invisible, and the Fantastic Four think that she's been disintegrated. Ben Grimm is turned into a bunch of, or is encased in a bunch of rocks. And Human Torch is the only one not recovering from his burns until he catches fire. Mr. Fantastic reforms and tries to put out Johnny and then Johnny Storm says, I'm on fire, but it doesn't hurt. Boom. Snap back to Mr. Fantastic showing up in um, it, it, towards the end of one division and now he goes into the he builds their little vehicle and then their tank thingy and then they go into the hex and then boom that's how you fucking introduce the fantastic four there are other ways you could do it and i think maybe you should um or not you they should uh have all of the fantastic forecast by this point hopefully and then they put that cameo in there um, so we can show all of them, 
And then you have Galactus, um, but he doesn't say anything. He just destroys the spaceship. Um, and it'd be cool if right next to them in the flashbacks we see um, the Silver Surfer's board. So, like, right as it cuts away, Reed looks over at the... He sees, like, a silver foot... And um, the Silver Surfer's board. The foot, by the way, is still attached to the body. We just don't get to see the body. I think that would be amazing. Um, so yeah, that's... Uh, I also think in the first Fantastic Four movie, the main villain should not be Doctor Doom or Galactus. It's been done to death. I think... Uh, Doctor Doom should come in at the end of the movie as like a post credit scene and they have like this awesome fight um, in the post credit scene where Doctor Doom wins and then it's just like the Fantastic Four will return in Spider-Man 4 or something like that. So, um, yeah, that, I think that would be dope. <laughs> um, also, I don't want to see Doctor Doom while they're being fought, I want to see, like, his metal hand. I want to see the bottom of his helmet and his green robe. I don't want to actually see his face or his full suit. Um, and I think that he should win, and that'd be a post credit scene. The main villain should be Namor the Submariner. It has not been done. He has not been put into any movies whatsoever. Not even been referenced in TV shows. I'm not counting cartoons. Um, I think that would be dope. And cameos that should show up in the Fantastic Four movie? Spider-Man, for one. And some of the Inhumans. I think that would be too dope to just not do it. Right? So. Let me know what you guys think. I think this is exactly what needs to be done. Um, so. You guys agree with anything I've said? If not, or if you have, have you agreed or disagreed with anything I've said here? Uh, let me know in the comments. <clears throat> and let, let me know what characters I, I should do next. Next, I'm going to do the Defenders. And probably Punisher. And then um, I'll do uh, whatever the one you guys suggest after that is. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's totally how you do it. You introduce the Fantastic Four in flashbacks on WandaVision. And then you have uh, Mr. Fantastic be the aerospace engineer. So we actually get to see him helping out their team. Or the team um, of Darcy, Wu, and Monica. But they don't actually show the other Fantastic Four members helping out. It's just Reed. I think you should leave a little bit to the imagination in my opinion. But I think the idea of like something so horrifying happening... Like, you know, maybe audiences who aren't familiar with the characters, which probably far and few between, would actually be shocked and have, like, this cool, like, surprise, like, these people are dying. And when they, you know, people, so when they see all of the burns on them, I think that would be very, like, brutal and then they start healing and stuff like that. Now, yeah, they don't really heal from the burns in the comics, I guess. They don't have any burns. But I think that's the way you do it, in my opinion, is you have the burns on them, and then they heal. But Johnny should be the last to heal, and then he should just catch fire. I think that would be spooky for some people. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be funny to see the reactions in the theater. Some people would be saying, yeah, it's the Fantastic Four, and other people would be like, <gasps> what the fuck? <gasps> um, but that's how you do it, man. Later.
Okay, I just want to say about mutants being introduced into the MCU, all my theories were wrong. I still stand by the fact that we do not need an explanation for mutants. We just need an explanation for how two characters in particular are mutants. Wolverine, people are like, guess what? Mutants don't make any sense in the MCU because da 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 da, -da. They can't have always just been here and nobody noticed. Except, what are you, fucking stupid? Wolverine was alive in the 1800s, and he served in both world wars. Nobody knew he was a mutant. That's fucking canon. Nobody, knows he, nobody knew he was a mutant until the 80s. There's a sliding time scale bullshit going on, so I don't really know what it's been retconned to. I believe the 80s are now like the early 2000s. Some weird shit like that, right? Um... But they don't explain the mutants. They don't explain that in the Fox movies. They don't explain that in the comics. They don't explain shit. And yet people are like, well, you need an explanation. No, you just need an explanation for why Wanda and Pietro are mutants. And that, if anything, really, you don't even need that explanation. Really, you just need an explanation that explains that they are mutants. You don't need an explanation on how they're mutants or why they're mutants. Just mutants. It happens. Dude, in the real world, nobody knew about mutations for a long, long time. I'm gonna get a little controversial here, get spicy, just because I just, you know, mention a certain name that people don't like, understandably, but, you know, a little, little spicy. Um, Adolf Hitler. His idea of perfection was white skin, blue eyes, blonde hair. Blue eyes are a mutation in humans. Do you know how long it took people to realize that? I don't, but it took a long time, all right? People were like, oh, hey, look, some people just have different color eyes. Blue is not a color that often appears in nature. In most instances, it is a mutation. And nobody's ever just like, hey, man, um, pfft, he's different. Um, so... I was going to say something else, but that could be wildly misinterpreted, even though I don't mean anything negative by it, so I'm going to drop that. Um, but basically, there's no need to explain. Some people had... And you can say that mutations have become more and more common. That's really all you need to say. That's what they said in the X-Men movies. So you had mutants from the... Dude, oh my god, I just found something else. Apocalypse? It's pretty much been around since the dawn of time, right? Nothing ever explains how he came to be. He's just a mutant. In fact, you kind of, you're kind of stupid if you think you need to explain mutations by radiation. That's not how the X gene works. The X gene naturally occurs. It's inevitable. The way your body, the way you adapt and to survive, the way your humans work, that's what the X gene is. There's no reason that you need to explain it. The only thing that is kind of weird is Apocalypse is from the dawn of time, pretty much. I mean, really, it's like ancient Egyptian times. I don't fucking know. Um, but he's like really, he's like fucking millions of years old. M millions. Fuck it. You guys get what I'm saying. I can't word it. Um, but... People are like, oh, Monica's a mutant because she went through the hex and she got mutation, or er, she got mutated. That doesn't make her a mutant. Just because her body structure changed when she went into the hex doesn't make her a mutant. That's not how mutants work. That's the opposite of the X gene. Because guess what? You're, everyone assumed that Scarlet Witch got her powers from the Mind Stone. WandaVision implies that her powers were only enhanced. They were always there. So we still got some nodding or nod to mut mutations possibly, because then Scarlet Witch also says, I'm not a witch and no one taught me magic. Which means that she just has a natural connection to magic, which they sort of brush away with the whole Scarlet Witch thing. But honestly, if you think about it, Scarlet Witch might just be a mutation herself. So if you think about that, and then her kids had to, had powers, right? 
I think her kids were mutants as well. Because them having powers is kind of weird. One has Quicksilvers and one has uh, Scarlet Witches, which doesn't make any sense from a genetic point of view. How that would mean there was a mutation that got passed down and it did something different for per each child. I kind of wish instead of uh, getting Scarlet Witch's powers though, uh, Billy got the power of um, um, magnetism. That would have been fucking cool. <laughs> that would that would have been fucking sick if he got the power of magnetism. Then everyone would be like, "What the fuck?" But yeah, it's kind of whack. So you don't need an explanation. You don't need anything. The mutants have been here, and there's nothing you can do about it. I am convinced. If you go out of your way to explain it, you kind of miss the point of natural evolution. The whole point of the X gene. You miss the point when you explain why the fuck it happened. Spider-Man's kid is a mutant because of Spider-Man's genetic code changing when he got bit by the radioactive spider. But that's because his genetic code changed. So when his kid got was born, the kid came naturally. Spider-Man is not a mutant, but his kid now is. That's how that works. It's genes, it's genetics, it's blah 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 blah. It's not like, oh, you entered the hex and now you got Captain Marvel's powers or some shit. That ain't how it works. Also, I know it's not Captain Marvel's powers, I'm just saying. Um before anyone tries to just debunk my whole thing because I fucked up one sentence. So I'm just saying you don't need an explanation for mutants, and I don't know why people insist that you do. That is all. People are like, oh, well, we gotta explain. You can't just, they couldn't have just been here the whole time. Have you picked up an X-Men comic? Have you watched an X-Men movie? Have you, have you watched, have you watched one of the, one of the muties? Have you watched one of the muties? They give you the explanation in the first movie. They literally fucking tell you how it works. Why don't you watch the first movie, guys? Not the first in the timeline. Straight the first movie. I think they explain it in the first in the timeline as well, actually. First class. But if you watch X-Men 2000, as in the year... Yeah. Like, what the fuck? So. Hmm. Yeah, uh, so piss off. With a piss offing, with a, with a pissing off device. The snap creating mutants doesn't really make any sense either. How, how is you going to create Wolverine back in like 1806 with a snap in 2019? Bitch, explain us. Bitches, explain us. I do think that the way they should introduce mutants though is with Billy and Tommy in Doctor Strange 2. Because I'm, I'm like confident that they're going to appear in that. Um, and uh, Spider-Man in like the future. And so like Billy and Tommy and Spider-Man will be the first mutants we see. Then we see like Professor X trying to get, not Spider-Man, Spider-Man's kid. Professor X, like maybe Spider-Man's like, why doesn't my kid have spider powers? Why is my kid so different from me? And then Charles Xavier just shows up in the post credit scene. And then in like the first X-Men movie, Charles explains that mutants have been here all along, you just didn't fucking notice because you never... When would we have seen the mutants even in the movies? When? It could easily just be said that when Iron Man... When, during Iron Man, Iron Man 2 and Iron Man 3, by the way, there's a post credit scene in the first Iron Man that me references mutants. It was taken out of the film, but that's really all you need assorted mutants so the fuck guys so that's that's like really the fucking dumb guys it's like really fucking dumb so the way you introduce mutants spider-man 5 he has a kid with mj there's a bit of a time skip Time jump, whatever. 
and then Billy and Tommy in Doctor Strange 2 pulled from another universe and then Wanda and Vision actually have their Billy and Tommy time skip and then you have um um the first X-Men movie which apparently is currently called The Mutants which um that'd be sick as fuck Oh, and so you put Billy and Tommy and Spider-Man's kid in, well, not Billy and Tommy and Spider-Man's kid. More like you put the kid of Spider-Man with Billy and Tommy, and um, they can be like the, they could do like Young Avengers or do um, a Power Pack, which I would prefer. I mean, yeah, it would be a very different team than what the Power Pack is in the comics, but... You can include the power pack as well. You don't just need to take the name. But yeah, do power pack, uh, introduce power pack in the first X Men movie, but focus it on like Cyclops and Jean and Professor X and Magneto. And then do, um, have more focus on power pack in X2, but then the power pack get their own movie, obviously, and it's still an X Men movie. With X2. And then you can have Billy and Tommy and whatever after the first Power Pack movie. Leave the Power Pack and go do Young Avengers. And then another time skip. So you can age the characters up a bit more. Be fucking sick. I'm sick, so I'm not in work, so I'm doing another how to introduce Blink into the MCU. That is not based on comments because my video hasn't gone up yet. So there are really no comments to pull from because no one even knows that I'm fucking doing this right now. Um, yeah, I can work through a lot of things at work. I can work through a headache, I can work through sneezing or sniffles or whatever. I, I can't work through nausea. And it's too late to call him and be like, yeah, hey, I'm feeling a little bit better. I, I probably wouldn't anyways. But, yeah, my stomach's so crazy upset. I had to take a bunch of medicine. That barely did anything. So, anyways. Um, here is how to introduce Charles Xavier and Magneto. Um, so, I think... Um, Charles Xavier... Uh, should be a post credit scene. Magneto should be introduced in whatever movie has um, Xavier next. Uh, but I, I think it'd be really cool if we changed up how the characters are a little bit. Um, I can't remember fully how I came to this decision. But I think uh, they should make they should focus on a younger Charles Xavier and a younger Magneto similar to um James McAvoy I think is his name and uh Michael Fassbender um I think uh um something like that 
but also kind of think they should make um, Xavier more of a superhero. It'd be cool if he used his uh, powers, telekinesis and telepathy, to um, help him in battle. And he had the full use of his legs. Like, I want to see some Daredevil bullshit, right? Like, not flipping around like Spider-Man, but, you know, doing somersaults, um, being, like, really good. I think we should give Charles Xavier Eskrima sticks, honestly. Um... And I think the movie uh, should also focus, should also have other mutants, right? Um, specifically, Iceman, uh, Pyro, and um, X Men. <laughs> the X Men should be um, Pyro, Iceman. And Blink, probably, should be the mutants for this first movie. Um, I think Iceman and Pyro should be, uh, should start out as kids. Um, but Blink is probably more around, um, Xavier's age. And so, um, Xavier, uh, would know when to fight and when to, um, try to talk people down. And I think it'd be cool if Magneto was more of a hero in this movie. People expect him to be a bad guy, so why not change it up a little bit and make him a hero for a little bit? Like, I think an entire movie of him being a hero. You see that he has, um... In these moments where he's arguing with Xavier about how they're supposed to be doing things. But he's but he still more or less follows Xavier's lead. I think that would be great. And, um, so the Pro X-Men, um, go out on their first mission. Charles Xavier, Magneto, Blink, Pyro, and Iceman all do their thing. And, uh, we get to see, um, how they work as a team, how their powers work. Um, we get to see Xavier freeze people up using his mind, and then throwing through walls. Um, Xavier can... Uh, yeah. So, Magneto... And he follows Xavier's lead for this whole movie, I think that would be cool. Um, they're buddies. They argue, but they're still friends. Um... And yeah, they just have more and more disagreements as the movie goes on. But nothing will actually happen with that in this movie. Uh, and this movie is going to be called... Um, what would we call this one? I don't think it should be an X-Men movie. So... Hmm. We'll call the movie Professor X. So it'll be an Xavier movie. Because honestly, the X-Men should be like an Avengers movie. So you have all the individual characters getting their own movies, and then they do the um, team-up movie. And so at the end of the movie, they build the school. Um, and that really ties us back to where we are in the current... Um, where we are in the comics, more or less. Um... And then the first X-Men movie, uh, or I guess not really, the next movie would be Cyclops, featuring Cyclops, and um, so we get to see Cyclops, the new mutants that this movie introduces, it keeps all the old ones, Cyclops, Jean Grey, and um, uh, sunspot. Now Cyclops and Jean Grey are going to be teenagers, but uh, Sunspot will be more or less around um, Xavier's age. And so they'll all come together, and then um, hmm. uh, we'll see Magneto and Charles Xavier disagree a lot more. Um, and at the end of their final disagreement in the movie, 
we'll see Magneto um, start like clenching his fist and everything around him going nuts. And then the post credit scene can be a sentinel. Enti mutant entity detected. So, uh, yeah. Um, and then the, uh, the next movie would be X-Men, or X-Men. And it would feature, um, the only two mutants it would introduce, uh, would be Wolverine and Beast, and it just fleshes out the story of the rest of them. And even though there are going to be Sentinels in this movie... I don't think it should be a Days of Future Past movie. Not yet. It should really just more or less be the first Avengers movie, but now with the X-Men. So you have, um... Charles... So you have, like, Charles Xavier, Iceman, Sunspot, Blink, Pyro, Cyclops, and Jean, and then Wolverine and Beast. Um, and the Sentinels would not be the Days of Future Past type Sentinels. They'll be very small. Think of the, uh, Dark Troopers from, um, um, the, uh, the Mandalorian. I think that's how you do the Sentinels first, the first time around. Um, but even though there would be Sentinels and there'd be a plot point with Bolivar Trask, uh, Magneto is the main bad guy of the movie. Um, and yeah, Charles Xavier is still around fighting. Still has the use of his legs. But I think we should see him do, uh, when he's fighting, he should focus on, like, kicks rather than punches and stuff. And that way, when Charles Xavier inevitably loses the use of his legs, it feels way more impactful. I think that'd be great. So I think um, Charles and uh, Charles and Magneto's um, final argument in this movie is going to be something like really big. Like I think maybe one of the mutants get killed by um, I'm think uh, by a sentinel. Um, and so Magneto wants to go kill Trask for creating the damn things. And Xavier says that they'll never be able to coexist if they view them as a threat. And um, Magneto just continues uh, and says, they're the ones threatening us. And um, I think that would be really good. So then uh, Magneto, uh, or like maybe Charles tries to get into Magneto's head and stop him. And uh, Magneto probably is like, nice try. This helmet prevents such attacks. Um... And so, uh, then, uh, Magneto starts throwing stuff at Charles, and Charles keeps swiping it away. So, Magneto throws, um, throws a car at him, and he gets away, but while he's on the ground, he picks up a girder and throws it at Charles, which paralyzes him from the waist down. And I think it'd be cool if, um... Charles forgave Magneto pretty much instantly, showing what kind of person he is, but also how Magneto is really beating himself up about what happened. Um, and so I think that those that three those three movies are a good way to establish their personalities um, and establish the characters and establish the drama. Like, um, whereas, uh, in the, in X-Men First Class, Magneto accidentally paralyzes, um, Charles. In this one, he does it on purpose. Like, he doesn't know what the result of his actions are going to be, but he's still intended to harm Charles. So I, I think that's how you do that. Also, I think Wolverine should be in, like, only, like, 30 minutes of the movie. He should really be more of a minor character in this movie.
Um, but I do want to see him cut open some Sentinels. Uh, and yeah, I think that's how you do it. Um, maybe at the end of the X-Men movie, you have um, Magneto form his brotherhood. So, um, it'd be cool if Pyro and uh, Jean joined the brotherhood. Um, like, I know Jean is the good girl, she doesn't do that shit, but make some changes, it'll work. I think it'll be really cool and add some drama. Um, and then I'm assuming that they're going to have a version of Quicksilver at some point. I would hope so. And I really want to see Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch um, join the uh, Brotherhood as well. Uh, perhaps Magneto has made uh, Pietro an offer. And um, maybe he feels um, rejected or forgotten. Um, so he hates the Avengers now and he's going to help Magneto kill the X-Men, or not kill them, but he's going to help Magneto stop them, and um, he's going to help, uh, Magneto is going to help Quicksilver uh, stop the Avengers. Because I don't think Quicksilver would want to kill anyone. Um, but Scarlet Witch would feel probably rejected by uh, the Avengers after what she did in WandaVision. I actually don't really know how that's painting out because uh, we still have two episodes left as of the time of recording this. But I'm willing to bet even after the reveal that it was all Ag Har Agatha Harkness, I bet even after that reveal, um, Wanda still had some part to play in it. Um, so she'll probably feel rejected or something like that and she'll go to the Brotherhood. Yeah, so I think that's how you introduce Charles Xavier, Magneto, and some of the other X-Men. Um, when I come back to mention the other X-Men, I'll uh, I'll give some different ideas. Uh, because I have, there are multiple ways to do this, and I'm intent on explaining all of them. You guys just let me know what you want me to tackle next. Uh, if you don't, it's probably going to be... I'm probably going to explain the Brotherhood a bit more. Uh, and the Brotherhood, by the way, would include characters like Gambit and um, Rogue. So, uh, yeah. Let's see. Um, what you guys want me to do? Just leave a comment and I'll explain basically anything. Uh, if you want me to talk about Dark Claw or the Hyena, I can even do that. I know there's no chance in hell of them ever show showing up in a movie. But, that's not the point of this video, so, if you want me to talk about Dark Claw and Hyena, go ahead. Bye. Cheat on.